Hey everyone, Mike here. What we're going to do is we're going to make a short circuit block. Uh, it is used in testing the cable, the continuity of the wires between the upper console and the lower control board. It's a very easy uh, tool to make. Uh, you just have to have the right uh, things to do it with. <clears throat> what I have is a printed circuit board. Uh, it doesn't really have to have a copper backing on it. It just needs to be a, a board that has the perforated holes because what you're going to want to do is you're going to cut the the uh, you're going to cut this board down into small chunks about like this right here and then with those you're going to use that as your jig to be able to insert your pins and you're going to want to insert the pins on the opposite side of where the copper is on your uh, print on your circuit board so you're going to run the pins in and make sure that your pin your first pin is facing in the direction all other pins are going to go in and as you insert these pins as you insert these pins you'll see all of these are going to be heading uh, pointing in the same direction so let's go ahead and load this uh, load this jig up with all of these pins <clears throat> now on the last pin that you put in uh, you'll want to have it facing back against the grain uh, of all the others. That way your last one will have a rounded rounded edge just like the other side. And then what you're going to want to do is take these pins on the side you're going to be soldering on and push down to make sure that all of the pins ha are lined up evenly on your circuit board. So now what we're going to do is take the second piece of circuit board that we've cut down and flip it around and place it against those pins and push just squeeze them together just like so and then put your put a couple little alligator clips uh, the more power your clips have the better right on the end of the uh, right right on the uh, board that's going to hold this board in place to make sure that these pins don't don't slip away don't slip off of that board and get out of uh, get out of order there. So now the other thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to now want to take a pair of flat nose pliers just like these right here and then what you're going to want to do is on your board you're going to want to take the pliers and just gently squeeze all of these uh, tips squeeze them down and then what that'll do is it will help lock the pin in front of each one of these it'll help lock them together and it will also uh, give more surface for your solder to lay on so now what I want to do is retest and make sure push down on these pins here to make sure that all those pins are in the same direction now what we're going to want to do is place it on a vise like so now the flux the plumber's flux I'm gonna to want to load my brush up and we'll load it up really good here because we want to load up <clears throat> these pins on the back and what this flux does is it allows when you start using your soldering gun it's gonna allow that uh, solder to flow much much smoother and even and quicker. Uh, I like to get started with a piece of uh, solder that's not on the end of the spool because it's much easier to handle this way. Now what you're going to want to do is take your soldering gun. I have a 100 watt gun here. You don't want um, you can use something less than that but a 100 watt gun will, will, get, will have enough power so that it will heat up these sub deconnectors much quicker to allow the the uh, solder to flow more evenly and what you do is well I, this is actually a dirty tip I should keep my tip clean but I haven't done that um, you clean up the tip it'll flow it'll even flow even better um, but what, you'll know your soldering gun is hot enough and ready to go when you touch the tip of the soldering gun with your solder and you see it melt off just like that all right so let's go ahead and and start doing our soldering here
And what you can do is load up your tip with some solder and bring it down and touch the touch the pins, run it across. That what that's doing is it allows that solder to lay down quicker and really bunch it up and short all of these pins on the back side. It'll it'll short them all out. That's the whole idea. Um, really doesn't take a lot of skill to do this right here. Um, to be quite honest with you, it might be better for you to uh, purchase all of this stuff, even though it's going to cost you a lot more. Um, it'll give you a chance to practice with a soldering gun. So continue running your soldering here and just run it back and forth as you're running the soldering gun back and forth like this you want to continue to feed the solder right into the gun and then you'll see it starting to starting to pull up all of the solder on the back sides of these um, flattened out pins and what that is going to do is it's going to give some structural integrity to the back side here to hold all these pins in place so that it will take a beating inside your tool bag you can see I'm really loading this up here <clears throat> There we go. Pretty easy thing to do. Just look at it. You'll see all the solder filled that has filled in all of these uh, these areas. Now all you need to do is take the jig out of the vise, and I like to clean up the back sides of those pins so that when I run this. Uh, assembly down inside my plastic dip I end up with a product that looks just like this right here that's the finished product that's all there is to making a short circuit block uh, again you can make them yourself I'll have all the links to pieces and parts that you need or you can just go ahead and purchase one right here from the United Assemblers I already have dozens of them made up and you're looking at twenty dollars a piece um, that $20 will also help this network grow because it's needed to pay for other things like websites and some of the other services that we use. Until the next video, this is Mike. We'll catch you later.